going on everyone? Good morning, it is Adam from Green Auto Services and welcome to a new video. We uh, have back in the workshop this 2019 Land Rover Discovery Sport. Um, it's back purely because last time we had this in we did a service but we also found that the external water pump was leaking coolant and the customer is topping up the coolant on a very regular basis. That is very, very bad. Uh, so today it is in to have a new water pump replaced um, and I'm quite looking forward to it. I've never done a water pump on these engines before because in the grand scheme of things these engines are particularly new so on that note um, don't forget to hit the uh, like and subscribe button especially if you're enjoying it but let's get straight into it and show you guys exactly how to carry out this procedure Okay guys, so um, all I've literally done is taken the offside front wheel off and the front of the inner wheel arch liner and straight away you can see the extent of the leak. Now obviously bearing in mind it's a slow leak that's been happening over a long period of time so it, it, it is bad, it looks worse than it is but the water pump is still leaking quite substantially. So I'm going to turn you around and uh, just let you have a look at uh, what I've done and exactly what we're looking at. So this is the offside front of the vehicle. So I've taken the wheel off and the inside wheel arch liner. Now it's only secured with um, a few plastic uh, nuts but it's just come straight off, a couple of cross heads. Um, but they come out really, really easy. Um, be careful when you take it off because there are a couple of uh, wires here that are attached to the side of the um, inner liner. So don't just go ripping it out without checking first that they are definitely disconnected. But this does give you a good view here of the side of the engine. So we have your crank pulley, um, we've got a couple of idlers, uh, you've got your AC compressor, uh, you've got your alternator up there. That's your tensioner and another idler. So up here is where we're looking. Let me just put that there. Get shed some light on the situation. Right, so this is your water pump up here. So we've actually got to take the belt off. The water pump pulley comes off separately to the water pump, just with the three bolts. But I don't know if you can see, look, you've actually got a little bit of coolant which is fresh wet coolant just there, which has all been dripping down, and it is completely covering the entire engine. And again, you've got, can you see it all up there? So what's actually happening, um, the water pump is leaking, but you've got to imagine this is spinning really, really quickly. So as it's leaking, it's just throwing coolant all over the place. Um, so that is why we're replacing it. Now normally I would either have the engine run in or I would put the coolant system under pressure so I can physically see where it's coming from but I am 100% sure that is coming from the water pipe and regardless it is going to get replaced anyway. So the first thing we need to do is detension um, the belt and take the belt off. Okay so all I'm going to do here is detension the tensioner which I am using a T55 piece that might actually be a T60 but it fits in there lovely and then just using a small pin I'm going to lock it off but I'll show you that more closely once I've done that just need to see Okay, so I've actually now locked off the tensioner. So using your T55 socket, you want to pull the tensioner downwards, so clockwise, and then you've got a, an ear on the tensioner just there, which goes past the hole, so you can put a small pin in there and then let it off to lock itself off. So that is now constantly detensions. So now we can go ahead and remove the belt um, from the system. But just before you do, make sure you do yourself a little diagram or just make a mental note of exactly the route the belt takes so that when putting it back on, it's a lot easier and quicker. Okay, there we are. As you can see, um, I was top of the class in my arts and crafts uh, when I was younger, um, but that is literally just a diagram, just so I know exactly where the belt is rooted. So obviously we've got your crank at the bottom, that's your water pump, uh, AC compressor, alternator and these are just various idlers and tensioners um, and, that, and literally just draw it around. So now I know exactly where it's going to go when I take it off. Uh, 
God, everything is so crusty. Where all the coolant has dried, you can just hear the coolant just being scraped off as I take the belt off. And there is dust flying everywhere. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we are, that's the belts out. Okay, so there we are, the belt is off. Um, it's always good practice uh, to really replace these belts. Um, I haven't got a new one in because this one wasn't snapped or anything. On closer inspection though, you always want to have a little look. If I can get that focused, there we go. I mean, the actual belt itself is in pretty good nick. Normally what happens is the belt will show uh, very evident signs of cracking and perishing, um, but this one is absolutely fine. There is um, some minor fraying going on, on the edges. That could have a lot to do with the coolant or just general uh, wear and tear anyway, or perhaps that water pump is actually uh, slightly worn and actually not allowing the belt to run true, causing wear. Um, I'm probably gonna recommend that he has a new belt, but for the time being, this will be absolutely fine to put on there. And it is actually really easy to take off and renew. So we'll probably do that on a later date. Um, so let me just take you up to that water pump. Okay, so this is the side of the engine and uh, now that we've got the belt off, it's actually given us obviously a little bit more room, but you can see the extent up there of the leaking water pump. Uh, apologies for the lighting. Hopefully you can see that that is just quite bad. So obviously that pulley is spinning so fast and as the coolant leaks out, it's just throwing it everywhere. So that is what we're replacing. Um, now, I have noticed looking at the new pump that actually this water pump has some electronics attached to it. Now I don't know if you can see, there's two plugs there. One there and one there, which is all covered in coolant. Um, they actually come with the new water pump. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this water pump off uh, along with the pulley and then I'm gonna marry the two up and show you, um, obviously it's gonna be exactly the same, but show you what to look out for, because it just gives you a good idea of what to look out for when you're removing the old one. Okay, so this is actually going quite well. Um, this is looking quite straightforward, um, more than I thought actually. Um, famous last words, let's not speak too quickly. Um, I'm gonna spin you around, just let you know what I've done so far and what I found um, and exactly how to tackle this, but um, it's very straightforward. So let me just spin you around. There is the water pump. Now, it probably looks a little bit different to what you saw it as, purely because I have uh, just removed the actual pulley, which is bolted to the outside of the impeller with three 10 mil bolts. They come off quite easy. Um, don't get me wrong, give me five minutes once I've got this all out. Um, I'm gonna show you everything on the bench, which is gonna be a lot more clearly. So once you've removed the um, pulley, it gives you a lot more access to the bolts that actually hold in the water pump. So the water pump has uh, eight mil bolts holding it in. And uh, what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts, I think it is. Um, and my next step is just to now start cracking these off bit by bit. So you've got to just bear in mind, once you crack them off, um, let's get you focused there. Once we crack them off, coolant is going to start potentially coming out uh, of the engine, so I need to put something underneath to catch as much as possible. Um, most people will probably drain the whole system through the lowest radiator hose, but actually the water pump is quite high up, so I'm probably only gonna lose um, what's in the top part of the engine. So I'd rather save as much as I can. Um, so the next thing, like I said, I'm gonna crack off all the eight mils and then take it off, put it all on the bench and show you exactly what I've done. Okay, here we go. So I have uh, successfully removed the water pump. Um, I also ended up having to remove the tensioner and the guide that was right next to it. And again, don't worry, I'm gonna show you the entire procedure with all the parts on my bench and the specific order I did it in. Now, the only reason I moved the tensioner and the guide pulley is purely because the guide pulley was stopping the tensioner from coming out and the tensioner was stopping the water pump from being maneuvered out from uh, the back of the engine. But with both of those removed, it literally came straight out of this section here. So let's go to the bench and I'll explain everything from start to finish. Okay, here we go then guys. So this is the really 
informative part of everything that we've done. So, bear with me, I am gonna take you through everything. So, this is the old water pump. Now, let's just say for starters, imagine this is still attached to the engine. Um, the very first thing that I took off was the actual pulley that drives the impeller itself. So that would be on the front there, held in with three 10 mil bolts. So a good way to crack these off, because you are limited for room. Now, I had a long 10 mil spanner, and I just had a small lever bar, and literally all I was doing is locking between two of the bolts to stop it from rotating and then using the spanner just to crack them off and then rotate it around, do the same thing again, crack it off, spin it around, use the lever bar to stop it from turning, crack it off. Once you've cracked those nuts off, they will be just finger tight so you can literally just take them straight out. Then all from there onwards, you just give it a little bit of a wiggle and eventually that pulley, which the drive belt runs and drives, will just come straight off. Now what happened when I took that off, literally a whole load of coolant just fell down. It was just all collecting inside here, which is another telltale sign that it's the internal seal that's failed on this water pump and is leaking through where the impeller actually goes through the body. So I took that off and put that to one side. That exposed the water pump itself and you can actually gain access to the eight mil bolts the six of them that actually hold this all into place. Now don't forget you do have the two connectors on the end here, which I'll just explain what they do in a moment. There are, you make sure you disconnect them first. There are a couple of safety catches on the end of them that you have to pull outwards to then be able to push down to unlock the tab to pull it off. And that is the same for both of them. Once they're both disconnected, you can then go ahead before cracking them off. I advise, to take off the idler and the tensioner. So this idler actually just screws into the body of the tensioner like so. And actually in hindsight, okay, I could have just taken off the idler and the tensioner all in one. I kind of thought this was attached to something else, but all I had was, what did I use? I used, so if you guys are doing it for the first time, I used a T50 Torx into the middle of the tensioner, cracked it off, pulled it all the way out, and then that whole tensioner, now knowing in hindsight with the uh, guide pulley will come off as one piece, but I'm obviously gonna screw that back in when it goes together. Now, the reason I did that is so that when you crack off the six, eight mil bolts that hold the water pump to the engine, because of the size of it, you can't really easily maneuver it out. I actually couldn't get it out, so I took that off to make some space. As soon as I took the tensioner and the guide off, this literally just fell out. So, like I said, six eight mil bolts. I've actually got them laid out here, also in the same orientation, or the place, that I've actually taken them out. Sometimes you'll have one odd bolt, which is slightly longer, because it's got a deeper thread. For whatever reason, just keep an eye out for that. But in this case, they're all the same size, all the same thread, all the same length. So uh, it doesn't matter if you get it mixed up. I just like to keep them all in order for belts and braces. So there we are. There is your water pump removed from the engine. Okay, so now that we've got the water pump out, we can now compare it with the new one. Now, this is a genuine one from Jaguar Land Rover. And obviously, it's correct. Um, it comes with new sensors. It obviously comes as a complete unit, which will also have a seal pre-manufactured in there. So it literally is just a case of bolting this up to the engine. Um, the other good news is, is that it's actually got a couple of dowels, which basically means that will help to locate it in place whilst you do it up. And it also fail safe so that you won't put it in the wrong position. We just put that there. Now this one, we're done with this one. We know this one's leaking. What I suspect has happened is as the um, auxiliary belt drives the water pump turbine like that, as you can see, when that turns, the impeller turns, 
there will be a dynamic seal inside this housing which I suspect has failed and it's just leaking out through that it's dripping down into the bottom of the pulley and as it's spinning so fast it is just chucking coolant everywhere so that is why we're replacing it okay so just to talk to you um, a little bit about what these sensors do now again I haven't replaced one of these however I am intrigued to see what these sensors do. Now, I've only seen one other water pump with these sensors on, um, and the more newer engines from VW, Audi, Seat, Skoda, they have what's called an electronic water pump, which basically means um, one of these sensors, I kind of suspect it is going to be this one here, will actually uh, activate this sleeve here. And what will happen, this sleeve, when activated, will actually cover the impeller blades here and actually stop the impeller from pushing coolant around the engine. Now, from experience, I actually think that when connected, this will be continuously on. Any vehicle will want to get to operating temperature as quick as possible to be as efficient as possible. But if the coolant's running around the system trying to cool the engine at the same time as it's trying to get warm, well, that's not just gonna help anyone, is it? So once that's connected, this sleeve will actually slide over covering the uh, impellers and the actual blades and reduce the coolant from circulating around the engine and therefore allowing the engine to get up to optimum temperature quicker. Once it gets to optimum temperature and it starts getting to a point where, okay, we need to cool things down, the electronic clutch will deactivate, the sleeve will slide back down, exposing the blades on the impeller and it will start circulating the coolant around the whole system and therefore cooling the engine. So that's what that particular plug is for. This one, I'm not 100% sure if any of you work for Jaguar Land Rover out there and want to tell me exactly what that one's for or if I've got it right or if I'm completely wrong um, please do let me know. I kind of suspect this may be some sort of temperature sensor. There's only two wires in there, so it's only going to have a feed um, and an earth, um, and it's probably going to go through a resistor which measures temperature and alter the readings accordingly. But that's just me spitballing. So there we are. We, all we need to do now is just fit the new water pump to the engine. But before we do that, we have to clean the mating face on the engine side to make sure that we ensure a solid seal and that we have no more leaks. Okay, here we are back at the car. Now, apologies for the lack of space. I uh, hope the light's okay. So just looking up here, this is where the water pump will bolt back to the engine. Um, so what we need to do is make sure that this mating surface that goes all the way around is as clean as can be. Uh, any dirt or debris may compromise the seal and then we'll be back to square one. It's looking relatively quite clean. All you need is some high grade emery um, paper or perhaps some wet and dry just to take off any kind of um, bits of dirt, debris, dry coolant obviously. Um, and then once that is completely clean and you're happy with it, we can then go ahead and bolt on the new water pump. So I'm just gonna do that now off camera, get it nice and clean, um, and then we can effectively start putting things back in reverse. Okay, here we are everyone, so we're back at it. Now, um, it probably doesn't look too much different to you guys, because to be fair, that was pretty clean when it all came off. The seal actually came off clean with the water pump, so it actually left behind not a lot of debris actually, which is really good. So I've just gone over that um, with some wet and dry, just make sure it's nice and smooth, run your finger all the way around it. Um, any pitting or scoring at all, just make sure it is nice and smooth. And if you're happy with it, the new water pump will go on and seal absolutely fine. The only additional thing I've done, now I've got the uh, privilege of having an airline, I've actually just made sure I've blown out any coolant or water um, out of the bolt holes just so that uh, we don't have any bolts that are hydrolocking and causing any potential issues and that it will hold the new water pump in absolutely fine. So uh, from here onwards, I'm now gonna put the new water pump back up in there. Um, again, because of lack of space and I'm doing it on my own as well, um, I'll get it up in there, secure it, and then show you step-by-step -step of the process of putting it back together. Okay, so there is the new water pump. Now, unfortunately, looking at the manufacturer specifications and even um, auto data, um, there is actually no tightening torques for the water pump. Now, 
I know there will be tightening torques, but I just can't find um, anywhere exactly what they are. Normally when it comes to water pumps, um, they're not much at all. Normally around about 10 to 15 newton meters at most. Um, because I don't have that information, I have just kind of done them all up finger tight as best as I can and then um, give them just a kind of a, a little pull round to just nip them up. But I'm more than happy with that. I'm now gonna take this opportunity to get some brake cleaner and just clean um, not everything, but just as much uh, debris from dry coolant um, as best I can, especially on those electrical connectors you may just see over there. They are quite engrossed. I'm gonna give them a good old clean up before I connect them. So that's my next job, and then I'm gonna get everything else with the tensioner and the idler um, and the drive belt back on, and then get this vehicle run up to temperature. Okay, so just to show you, with these electrical um, connectors, um, I'll just very quickly show you the back of it, I hope you can see there. Um, so they are a push fit, so as soon as you push them on, you should hear a little click, but most importantly, that red tang at the end of my finger there, that just needs to be pushed towards the plug to lock it in place, and that is the same for both of them. So this top one, click and push, and the bottom one, push in, there's the click and then push. And there we are, both of them are connected and locked in. So a very quick one as well, just as I'm putting the uh, tensioner back in, I thought I would give you a closer look of how you lock it. Um, so if you imagine this back plate is fixed to the engine, this whole front section is designed to rotate under a spring-loaded pressure to keep the tension on the belt. But like we did earlier, we used our T55 in that part of it there, and we levered it round to take the tension, tension off the belt so we can remove it. But this right here, that is the pin that we use. Let's get you focused there. To lock it. So this pin goes past, once you rotate it far enough, this shoulder goes past the hole and then you just put the pin in, let it off, and then that shoulder will stop against it. So it allows you to put it back on, put the belt on with the tension being completely off, and then when you're ready, you can just apply a little pressure using your T55 in there again, pull the pin out, and then allow it to naturally take up the natural tension. And then fortunately, when you're installing it, it actually has a large dowel which is that part there, which locates into a recess in the engine so it can be put back into exactly the same position. Perfect. Okay, there we go. So now we've got everything back in place. So the water pump's in, the pulley is bolted back on, the tensioner and the guide is back in. All it is to do now is to use my awesome little sketch, there we go, to put the belt back on in the correct position. Okay, so now I've already removed the pin from the tensioner so I'm just going to slowly let it off. There we are. And the belt is now all back and nicely tensioned. And there we are. We are all done. Okay, there we are. We are nearly there. Now, the, overall, this has actually been a quite straightforward job. So this is definitely something you guys can do at home. So what we're going to do now, now everything is back together um, and connected and the belt's back on. We're going to get, rather than put the splash guard on or the wheel arch liner in and the wheel back on, um, we're just going to leave it off for the time being, get it down to the ground, fill it up with coolant. Um, then I'm going to show you the best way of bleeding the system uh, when you've had coolant removed for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to get the vehicle down, fill it up with coolant, and then we'll go from there. All right, here we are guys. So uh, off screen, I've actually put the wheel arch liner back on uh, and the wheel back on and got the vehicle just off the ramp. Um, I have had the vehicle up in the air running and I can't see any obvious leaks, so that is a fix. Um, so once the vehicle is now off the ramp, I have topped up the coolant. So you probably already know, um, over in the corner here is your coolant reservoir. Now with the Land Rovers, these engines, they take red coolant or red antifreeze. Um, so make sure you buy the correct one when topping it up. Um, make sure it's either pre-diluted uh, so you can just pour it straight in 
or in a lot of cases there will be concentrate so you do have to mix it in with water 50-50. Um, it's very difficult to see but down the side of the coolant reservoir you do have a minimum and a maximum mark so you want to go ahead and fill it up to the maximum mark. Um, you will find that you'll probably hear a bit of bubbling or gurgling as the system is just letting air naturally out. Um, just keep topping it up until it stops draining down and it is on maximum. Um, keep the cap off for the time being because we are now going to run the engine um, so I'm going to take you inside the cab with me and show you what settings to put it on to ensure that we bleed the system successfully. Okay, so here we are back into the vehicle. Now, before you start the engine up, um, you want to make sure that you have the settings uh, set to the maximum heat. That way, the system is going to allow coolant to uh, flow to its maximum potential and ensure that we get heat through into the cab. Um, so actually, go ahead, start the vehicle up. And then I'll just spin you around. Now on these particular ones, you want to put your internal eating onto maximum, but you want to have your fan on the second or first lowest setting and have it coming through the vents as well. Ideally, you want to close off the center ones and just have access to the outside one um, so you can feel the warm air coming through the vents. The warm air coming through the vents is a telltale sign that the system is flowing coolant correctly. Um, and then you just want to keep on running the vehicle until the vehicle temperature gauge, if you have one, um, gets up to temperature. Um, so with diesels this does take quite a while, um, but you'll know when it's up to temperature when the cooling fan or the radiator fan will cut in. But don't be fooled, make sure your air conditioning is off because the radiator fan does also come on to activate and use the AC system. So make sure your heating is on flat out and your AC system is turned off. There we go, just keep running the vehicle up to temperature, making sure you, you top up the coolant as you go because it will start going down the warmer the engine gets. Um, and then once the cooling fan cuts in, you're all done. Okay, here we go then guys. So I've uh, had the vehicle running up to temperature for probably a good 20 minutes now and um, everything seems to be absolutely fine. I'm getting hot air coming through the vents. The temperature gauge is getting up to bang in the middle, uh, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, and everything seems to be circulating absolutely fine. So I am more than happy with that. Bear with it though, um, these diesel engines, they do take a long, long, long time to get up to op operating temperature and for the radiator fan to cut in. But we got there eventually. It may take another uh, five, 10 minutes, depending if the car's stone cold or not. Um, so bear with it. As soon as the fan cuts in, you can then ease off the accelerator and everything will be fine. From there onwards, you then have to let the car cool down and get back to as close to stone cold as possible because that is where the true level of your coolant will actually be. And it will drop and you will have to top it back up to maximum, but you will only be able to do that once you've let the vehicle sit preferably overnight, see it first thing in the morning and then top it up to the maximum. Um, the only other thing I am going to show you very quickly is that you may need to bleed the system, but fortunately there is actually a bleed valve on top of the radiator. I'll just take you around there now. And actually whilst we are here in the vehicle, I'll just show you what you're looking out for, for the temperature wise. Just forget. So when this car symbol is up, you have your temperature on the left here. Again, which is just cycling through the diesel emissions. When that arrow is bang in the middle, that is where it should stay. It shouldn't go any higher than that. If it goes any higher than that, um, it's sensing that the engine is starting to overheat, which could very likely be because of a potential airlock in the system. So if you do need to bleed the coolant system out, if you think you have an airlock, um, to the right hand side of the engine bay, uh, just in front of the air box, actually, on the flange there, you've actually got a bleed nipple. Um, so you just need a flathead screwdriver um, just to open that up slightly anti-clockwise um, until you have coolant come out, which is just what I've done there. And coolant came out almost straight away, so that would indicate that the system is successfully bled. Um, and then you just carry on from there until the cooling fan cuts in, and then you know everything um, has circulated successfully and the cooling fan is successfully cutting in as well. 
Okay, and there we have it guys, all done. That is how you successfully replace a water pump on a 2019 Land Rover Discovery Sport. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate all of your support. You guys are subscribing and liking left, right and center. So it is amazing, thank you ever so much. Uh, on that note, liked something, enjoyed something, or perhaps even learned a little something, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and we will 100% see you guys in the next video.